Hi everybody, welcome to In Pillow Talk. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching me from today. Hey, our stories haven't ended. God's mercy and favor is still upon us. That's why we're laughing. That's why we're smiling. Because our stories can change in a second, in a minute. God does not need days. God needs a second. Yes, God needs just a second with you. And everything will be put right. In Jesus' name. The series, the series continues. We're talking about faith. The, bad, the manual of life says the measure of faith has been given to every single one of us. A believer or non-believer is neither here nor there. A measure of faith has been given. But to operate in the Christ-like faith, to operate in the ability where the manual of life says you can speak to a mountain, to be thrown in the sea, that mountain will be thrown in that sea. Wow, what faith moves a mountain to the sea? The God kind of faith. And last week we added virtue to our faith. The Christ-like character. The high moral standards we need to work on. Today we're going to add knowledge. Yes, we're going to add knowledge. How do we add knowledge? We know knowledge is gained through several manners or ways, good or bad knowledge. What you know today, somebody showed you, somebody taught you, somebody directed you. Knowledge is gained through listening, through teaching, through mentoring. You gain knowledge, good, bad, ugly. That's how most of our knowledge that we know today has been gained. So now we know that for us to work <laughs> in the God kind of faith, we need to have high moral standards. Look at us today. There are things on our TV I'm watching and I'm seeing. 15 years ago, it was impossible for that to be seen on TV. But now where the moral standards of a nation is being eroded away, Everything goes. But God is mindful to tell us to stay away from lust, to stay away from jealousy, to stay away from gossip, to stay away from unforgiveness, to stay away from all the wrong things that we're not supposed to do. But yet, we still do it, even though we have the knowledge. It's like knowing how to lose weight. You can talk to somebody can teach you, but yet it's not working for me. Why? With all the knowledge I know, because I have not yet gained the skill of applying that knowledge so it can work for me. When we apply the knowledge to work for us, it would work. And you will be in the position where you can tell a mountain, to be moved and to be thrown in the sea without doubting, without any form of unbelief. And the manual of life says, and it will be done unto you according to your word. That takes practice. Skills takes practice. It takes time. It's a process. It may not happen the first time you say it. It may not happen the second time you say it because actually there's unbelief in what you're saying. You say it, but you don't even believe it. You do things with unbelief and it doesn't work because it says without doubting. So knowing, having knowledge, having plentiful knowledge is one thing. Applying it is another thing. All the knowledge you know today. How good are we at applying it to get the results we want? You see, we're quick to throw certain situations, certain things out. Because we don't understand that it takes perseverance, it takes sacrifice. If you're a job place and your manager isn't happy with your performance. And they tell you off. No matter what voice or the words they use to tell you off and ask for correction, and to be reported back the next day at a certain time, 
you'll stay up all night to work on that, to get the correction done and go back and hand it out. Why? Because you know you'll be paid. You know if you don't do it, you will be sacked because you're working below the capacity that you're employed for. But yet we all think by just reading the Bible and not doing what the Bible says, it would work for us. Jesus in the New Testament summarized everything into two. It says, love God with all your heart, body, strength, everything you have, love God with. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. We all say that. We all talk about it, but do we really do it? If you love your neighbor as you loved yourself, would you gossip about your neighbor? Yes, you. Would you betray your neighbor? Would you uh, plan bad wickedness against your neighbor? But yet on a Sunday, we carry the Bible and we're expecting miracles to happen. You now know why those miracles are not working. Yet you have unforgiveness in your heart. You remember what somebody did 10 years ago and you're holding on to it. Yet on a Sunday we go praising and worshipping and expecting things to happen. And then you hear people will tell you, but Viv, why this God? Why is so much wickedness happening in the world? If indeed there is a God, how much are you adding into the wickedness in the world with all the information you know? How much are you adding? The Bible says that the little foxes that eat the vineyard, it's not the big ones. We all know the big sins. What about the little sins you're having, you're doing in those dark places, assuming with your phone? Assuming nobody knows. Oh, I'm hiding it from my uh, family. Oh, I'm hiding it from my wife. I'm hiding it from my husband. They don't know what I'm doing up to. And they don't know my children don't. But somebody bigger than all of them know. Be mindful of who can kill the body and spirit in fire. We won't transform ourselves. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take a process to build that skill to work with the knowledge you have. Oh my God, I can write a book on how to lose weight. And it becomes a bestseller, but has it worked for me? Hey, not yet. It will work for me. I promise you that. <laughs> or because it's a whole lot of sacrifices, you start, you stop, you start how many people? have done the stop and start game because it's a whole lot of sacrifice for us to do and walk with the Lord. We need to dig deep, deeper than we've ever done before to transform our minds, transform the old you and be willing to know it's a process. You would fall, stand up, dust yourself and continue in the right direction. And the Lord, your God, will be with you and order your footsteps throughout your way. In Jesus' name I pray. If it tarries to calm, see you next week for the next addition. If you haven't given your life to the Lord and you wonder, how do I do it? Just invite him in. Say, Lord Jesus, I invite you in my heart. I want to know you more. I don't know you, but I desire to know you more. Come into my heart. Show me yourself teach me to love you i believe you died for me i read and i believed but i need an encounter with you so help me to know you more in jesus name we pray amen love you love you love you guys be bold be strong for the lord your god is with you bye-bye for now <music>